when you see a problem 25 of AMC 12B, you know it's not going to be an easy question. You know it's going to fight back. You know you're going to have to make some creative discoveries and some, some marvelous work with some beautiful uh, manipulation of what you're given in order to get the answer. So th this question is not going to be a really easy one compared to other AMC problems and me and my younger brother we were trying this question out a few hours ago in fact it took us more than 20 minutes to figure it out working together and I made some marvelous discoveries along the way that pushed us toward the solution my younger brother made some crucial ones too and combining our works we figured this question out without looking it up and we we during the process we almost persuaded ourselves that we're not going to get the answer anytime soon and maybe we should go and look at the solution but we were ten we we're tenacious and we eventually figured it out and i want to share our solution with you guys so this question is from 2008 amc 12b and it is the last question the hardest arguably the hardest question on the test problem 25 Okay, let A, B, C, D be a trapezoid with A, B parallel to C, D. When the last question on AMC is geometry, oh man, you better watch out. You don't know what's going to happen. A, B is 11, B, C is 5, C, D is 19, and D, A is 7. So let's draw this out. You know, we have a trapezoid, we have a trapezoid, and A, B is longer than C, D, so I'm drawing it like this. So AB is 11, so AB is 11, BC is 5, CD is 19, and DA is 7. Okay, so far, we at least know what it's talking about, which is, which is very good. Let's continue. Bisectors of A and D meet at P. So you're bisecting this angle, dividing it into two. You're bisecting this angle, and they meet at a special point, and we are going to name it P just for the sake of it. And B and C, the bisectors do the same thing, do the same thing, and they meet at Q. And they want us to find the area of the hexagon A, B, Q, C, D, P. So they basically want us to find this area, if I can shade it. So they want us to find this area inside the trapezoid. This, it doesn't look like a hexagon because it's concave, but it is hexagon with six sides. So the, the area of this region is what we are being asked to find. The first thing I see, the first thing I see is that if we can find the area of the entire trapezoid, we can subtract out the area of this tiny triangles and get our answer. So why don't we start by trying to find the area of a trapezoid? And whenever I'm trying to find the area of a trapezoid, given the four sides, this is usually the way I approach it. I, I apply two Pythagorean theorems. Let me show you. So 7, 11, 5, and 19. So you gotta find the height. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this trapezoid into a rectangle and two right triangles. And for the first right triangle, we have a height h. For this triangle, we have a height h too. But and let's call this let's call this to be x. Let's call this thing to be x. And what is this going to be? And that's a very good question. You know the entire distance is 19. You know this distance is 11. So you know this part and this part has to add up to 8. So this thing is going to be 8 minus x. So now let's work through some Pythagorean theorems and some algebra to figure out our height because we need to find the height to figure out the area of the trapezoid. So we know from the first right triangle applying Pythagorean theorem x squared plus h squared is 49. From second right triangle we get 8 minus x squared plus h squared is 25. Since 8 minus x squared may be a bit too much to manipulate uh, into a really really easily seen form, so I'm going to substitute h squared. So I'm going to solve this first equation for h squared and plug this in into h squared to simplify our equation in an easier manner. So plus 49 minus x squared is 25. Now let's expand this. This gets you 64 minus 16x plus x squared and x squared is cancel out so we don't have to worry about that plus 49 is equal to 25 and rearranging gets you 16x goes to, over to the other side 
we have 64 plus 49, which is 113, minus 25, which is 88. So that's telling you x is 11 over 2. 88 over 16, dividing by 2 gets you 11 over 2. So let's find our height. We know x squared plus h squared is 49 by this equation. So let's just plug it in. h is going to be square root of 49 minus x squared, or square root of 49 minus 121 over 4. Squaring this gets you 121 over 4. Let's continue. Let's continue. We are not even close to being done, and we have already gone through quite some steps. This thing is 4 over uh, 196 minus 121, which is square root of 75 over 4. And dividing by 1 fourth, you can get 1 half out of it. S square root of 75 is 25 times 3, so we can get 5 out, and square root of 3 is going to remain inside. So this is our height, 5 over 2 times square root of 3. Let me write that down, because... That's a, that took us quite a bit to find, so we don't want to mess that up. So we know the height of the trapezoid is 5 over 2 times square root of 3. So why don't we, why don't we, why don't we find the area of the trapezoid? So we know area of the trapezoid ABCD is going to be 11 plus 19, base is added together, divided by 2 times the height. And this thing is 30, dividing by 2 gets you 15. And multiplying by the quantity gets you 75 times square root of 2 over 3. So we know the area of the trapezoid. So all we have to do is find the area of these triangles and somehow, somehow subtract those out. And when I first tried it, I was trying so many various things. I, what I did, I labeled these angles as A. The, it's bisecting the angle. So you know, let's label both of them to be A. And we can let this be B, let these be C, let these be D. And we, I was trying to somehow uh, represent the the areas of these tiny triangles in terms of sine of angles, and which which I did. But uh, it, it was very painful for when we actually tried to plug in all the signs, and that didn't seem like the way to go. And my brother, looking at this question, and he was messing around a bit, trying to find sine of some angle that. I asked him if he can find, and he realized something. He drew this right triangle. He drew this right triangle, and let me, let me read, let me read about this since this thing is so significant. Okay, this, let me, let me read about the trapezoid really fast. So you know this thing is eleven five. Let me write five more into it actually because we're going to be drawing things nineteen and seven. So what my younger brother did to find sine of some angle, he drew this triangle. He drew this right triangle. And we know we already know the height. F height is 5 times square root of 3 over 2. And he said, hey, this thing is 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is 30, 60, 90 triangle because you have the hypotenuse. And when you divide it by 2, you get 5 over 2. Multiplying by square root of 3 gets you the other leg. So we have, we have what we need for 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we can find area of this triangle very easily. But... Well, how is that helping us finding the area of a triangle? Well, let me extend this and show you what we are trying to do. You know this thing is 60 degrees. This thing is 30 degrees. And you know this angle and this angle are the same. And since this thing is 60 and this thing is supplementary to it, you know these two angles add up to 120. And since they are the same, you know they are 60. Each of them is 60. So you know this thing is 60. This thing is 60, and you can apply the same reasoning to this angle. Since all of these add up to 90, and one of them is 30, these two has to add up to 60. And since they are the same, they have to be 30 each. And hey, we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle lying within. And I've seen so many questions in my life where 30, 60, 90 triangle pops up and you, when you're not expecting it, and this, this problem may, may be one of them. One of the ways... One of the problems I've seen that's so good at disguising 30, 60, 90 triangle, one of the best problems, in fact, I've seen in my life. So, we can find the area of this triangle. Since the hypotenuse is 5, this leg is 5 over 2, this part is 5 times square root of 3 over 2. So, our area of one of the triangles is going to be 5 over 2 times 5 times square root of 3 over 2 times 1 half, base times height over 2, or 25 times square root of 3 over 8. So, we have found area of one triangle. Can we find area of this one? Can we find area of this one? And this one, 
I figured out a very important part. Since each of these angles are A and these are B, and this thing is 60, this thing is 30, you know by looking at the whole trapezoid, 2A plus 2B plus 260s and 230s has, a, has to add up to 360 because all the interior angles of the trapezoid has to add up to 360. And you get 2A plus 2B is 180 because 120 plus 60 is 180, subtracting that from 360 gets 180, or A plus B is 90. And that's telling you this thing is a right triangle. So we have found another right triangle. And now what we're going to do, we're going to try to do a similar thing by expanding this side. And we know the height, which is always nice. So we know the height is 5 times square root of 3 over 2. And we're going to somehow attempt to find find this the area of this triangle. And we can find the area of a triangle if we know one of the sides of the triangle since we know the hypotenuse to begin with. So let's, let's label the sides. Let's say this side is x. Let's say this side is x and this side is y. If we can find x or y, we are done. And realize our sine of a is equal to x over 7. So if we can find sine of a, we are done. But we have 2a sitting here, and we also have 180 minus 2a for this triangle. And we can find, we can find sine or cosine of 180 minus 2a. Hey, wait a bit. Cosine of 180 minus 2a is equal to negative cosine of 2a. And can we somehow relate negative cosine of 2a to sine of a? Yes, we can by half angle formula. Let me first show you how we can find negative cosine of 2a. Since cosine of 180 minus 2a is same thing as negative cosine of 2a, and the reason is, let's call this angle to be 2a, and then this angle, this angle is going to be 180 minus 2a. You can see that the x coordinate when it intersects the unit circle is going to be the opposite. It's going to be negative of each other. So uh, we know this, and we have we have 180 minus 2a right here, and we know we know the we know the opposite side, and we know we even know the adjacent side. We actually figured that out right here. We that was x designated way back. So I used x twice. My that's my bad. So x is 11 over 2. So our x, so our x is 11. Oh, not this x, the adjacent length. So let me let me make sure we know what we're talking about. So this length is 11, 11 over 2. So we know the negative cosine of 2a is equal to uh, the adjacent over hypotenuse, or 11 over 2, divided by hypotenuse of 7, or 11 over 14. Hey, we're very close to being done. Sine of a by half angle formula is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine of 2a over 2, and we know negative cosine of 2a right here, that's 11 over 14. But what about the sign? Is going to be plus or minus? Well, the our a cannot be obtuse because it is in a right triangle, it has to be acute. So you know the sine of a is going to be positive, so we don't have to worry about negative sign here. So, uh, so let's plug it in. That's square, square root of 1 plus 11 over 14 divided by 2, also known as square root of uh, this thing is 25 over 14 up top, dividing by 2 gets you 25 over 28, which is 5 over 2 times square root of 7, or 5 times square root of 7 over 14. I just rationalized that. So our sine of a is this. So we can, we can find, we can find x. Our x, sine of a was x over 7, so we can find x. So we know 5 times square root of 7 over 14 is x over 7. So what is our x? Our x is 5 times square root of 7 over 2. Interesting. Now we can find y. Our y, let me redraw that triangle right here. We, we have 7, we have 5 times square root of 7 over 2, and we have y. So we want to find the area of this triangle, so let's find y. Our y is going to be square root of 49 minus this thing squared, which is 25 times 7 over 4. Oh man, this thing is taking up some space. So it's 196 minus, hopefully I'm not going to mess up. That's 175. So that's square root of 21 over 4, which is square root of 21 over 2. Okay, now we can find the area of this triangle. That's going to be x times y over 2. So it's going to be 5 times. So our area of the second triangle is 5 times. Oh man, we're getting so close. We can do this. 5 times square root of 7 over 2. 7 over 2 
times square root of 21 over 2, and I write it as square root of 7 square root of 3 over 2, so we can easily see 7 is going to pop out, times 1 half, and that's going to be, we have 35 times square root of 3 up top, dividing by 8. And we are very close to being done. Now we gotta find the area of the hexagon, which is going to be area of the trapezoid, area of a trapezoid, which was this numbers. So our answer is going to be 75 over 2 times square root of 3, so subtracting area of two, two triangles, what was one of them? Here's one of them, minus 25 times square root of 3 over 8, minus, minus this number, what was our number? 35 times square root of 3 over 8, 35 times square root of 3 over 8. Let's subtract first, because they have common denominator, maybe it's easier. 60 square root of 3. Hey, we can divide by 4 on, on this fraction to simplify it. So 15 square root of 3 over 2. Hey, we have common denominator, 2. And we have 60 square root of 3 up top. So our answer is 30 times square root of 3. After all this work, we have the answer. Our answer is B.